Tesla released their full self-driving subscription on Saturday. So for the last few days, I have been testing it out so that today I can give you guys a full self-driving overview. Today I'm going to go through all of the full self-driving features and show you my experience. Tesla's full self-driving subscription is $199 a month, or you can purchase it outright when you purchase your vehicle for $10,000. Full self-driving includes the features of auto lane change, navigate on autopilot, auto park, summon, traffic light and stop sign control. So the first thing we're going to go over is summon and smart summon. Both of these to me are basically the same thing which encompasses summon as a whole. So according to their website, summon navigates complex parking situations while abiding by lane markings and stop signs, avoiding pedestrians and obstacles like traffic cones, traffic trash bins and rogue shopping carts. It's also able to come find you anywhere in a parking lot and even park or unpark itself in tight spaces. One example of summon is being able to take your car and tell it to come out of your garage without you actually being in it. So if your garage is pretty tight like ours is here, we always have two cars in here, then you're able to back the car out and then the family can safely get in the vehicle. So we're gonna test this out today. On the app, you're able to go under summon and then you're able to hit reverse. So what you do is you click the button and you hold it and you will see that the car now will reverse towards us. I have to keep holding though the button down in order for it to continue to move backwards. As soon as I let go of the button, the car immediately stops. You're also able to pull your car into your garage as well without you being in the vehicle. So instead of hitting reverse, I'll hit forward and now the car will proceed inside of the garage. Our garage is pretty tight, so I'm interested to see how this goes. Yeah, that's actually really great. There we go. He made it safely inside of our garage. So we're at TJ Maxx and we are standing right now at the store and our car is over there. So we're going to test out the summon feature now to see if it works. Okay, so I'm gonna hit the summon feature. It's gonna to connect to our vehicle and then I'm gonna hit smart summon. So now it can see where I am. So now I'll hit go to target. I'm gonna wait for that car to go past it. And then now I'm gonna hit go to target. So you need to hold the button down and then now our car is coming to us. That's pretty cool. So you have to keep holding, oh. <laughs> there we go. He sees the other car there, so he's gonna now come to us. <laughs> So this is as far as we got the car to come to us. It wouldn't come right up to us. I'm not exactly sure why, uh, but it just stopped right in the middle of the parking lot here. The first part of Summon that we tested out was getting the car in and out of the garage. I think this one's really useful because I have had a tight garage before where it's really hard to get in the vehicle. So it's nice to, that the car can actually come out by itself and then you can get in the car. So this one worked really well. I will say I might be using this one more in the future because our garage can get tight sometimes so it would be nice just to be able to do that. The second part of summon is having your car come to you and navigate towards you when you're in the parking lot. So if you're coming outside of a store and you want your car to pick you up. This one seemed a bit buggier and the car never actually did come right up to me. It would stop a distance away. I was really nervous using this function around so many cars and people because I did think that the car might accidentally hit something, but it didn't. It did notice all the cars around it and did steer away from them and came, I will say, towards us. It never actually came to me, but it did come towards us, which is okay. I would never use this, but it's more of a party trick, but it did work decently well. 
So now we're going to test out the stop sign and traffic light control. If you guys watched my previous video from Tuesday, which I will link above, which is our first look at the FSD, we didn't have tremendous luck with this. So we're going to test it out again today and see how it does. For the stop sign and traffic light control, both of these worked really well. The car noticed the stop signs and the traffic lights every single time. When the car did approach the stop signs, it approached really fast and then abruptly stopped, but it did see the stop signs, which is great. And that was pretty useful and the function worked well. For the actual stop lights themselves, it also saw it every time. One of my favorite functions is that it does ding when the light turns green. I find this really useful just because sometimes I am looking out the window or something and I do like that reminder that it's time to go. Now for auto park. So if you guys watched my prior video, we could only get the auto park to work for parallel parking. So today I'm gonna to try to get it also to work in normal spots. According to Tesla's website, auto park is park with ease in both parallel and perpendicular parking spaces with a single button tap on the center display. The Model 3 will alert you to available parking spots by continuously monitoring the space around you while driving under 15 miles per hour. For auto park, initial, in my initial video, we couldn't get it to park in standard parking spots, but this time we were able to get it to work. It works best if there are multiple cars in the parking lot. If the parking lot is empty, it doesn't see the parking spaces and doesn't want to park itself. It just wants you to do it. Uh, but if there are cars around you in the parking spot, then it seemed to work pretty well. I will say with the parking standard and also parallel parking, the parking is itself was pretty slow. I like to park really fast because I feel like I'm always being rushed by other cars around me. And this one, you have to hit the P and then it has to back up. And it's just, it's way slower than I would like it to be. So that was my one caveat to using this. It does work and it did work decently well. So I've tried it out multiple times now and I was decently impressed with it. Now for lane change. This one's probably my favorite and the one I liked the best from testing this out previously. But today we're going to try it a few more times to see if it really is as good as I think it is. Auto lane change according to Tesla's website is, while driving on the highway, automatic lane change will position your car in the optimal lane to prepare for merges and exits while overtaking slow cars. Drivers are given clear insight to upcoming lane changes as well as customization to auto lane change functionality. So we tried out the auto lane change on the highway and it worked really well. The initial time that we tried it in my last video, it also worked really well. So we continued to try it out and I was really impressed with its accuracy and the car being able to see all the other cars around us. So I felt like this feature was really safe and I would be comfortable using this on a daily basis. Finally, we have navigate on autopilot. So according to Tesla's website, it is automatic driving from highway on ramp to off ramp, which includes automatic lane changes, traffic aware cruise control with complete stopping and re-engagement, auto steer and overtaking slow cars in your lane. This is the feature that probably feels most like full self-driving, but it only currently works on the highway. So on the Navigate on Autopilot, this one I would say didn't work as seamlessly as the auto lane change because it was a little scary when trying to use this on the exits. I will say that the car went really fast and took the turns pretty quickly, much faster than I personally would take them if I was driving. So that was the one thing that I personally wish that you could just change the speeds on it, make it like hit a little bit slower. But otherwise it did take the exits for the most part. Uh, but I wouldn't say that this feature was as seamless as the auto lane change. So that concludes all of the FSD features for their new subscription model. Please let me know in the comments down below your experience with FSD. And if you have any questions, um, I'll do my best to answer them as well. If you found this video helpful, please give me a like down below as that really helps out my channel. Also, if you're interested in learning more about Tesla, I make new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.